All right, so some more work, just a small thing here on the Mustang. When I push the um, knob in to hit the washer fluid up on the windshield, uh, nothing, the, the wipers cycle through their, you know, three back and forth revolutions, but no fluid comes out. So I suspect that the pump is faulty. So I'm gonna come over here on the driver's side. I already got the car uh, jacked up. And I'm gonna take the wheel off and then take the, the uh, fender liner out and um, you know, a new pump from LMR is 30 bucks and plus some new wiring, so I'm not gonna sweat it. I suspect maybe my wiring is kind of rotted out or um, could also be, you know, due, just due to age, 29 years old. So let's, so let's get into this. So let me uh, take the wheel off. I got the, I think they're called the pony room. So I just got a little indention here and I can, you can just get a screwdriver or my little um, uh, dry tool. This is more, this tool works for this. It's more for like um, taking the little plastic tabs off, which I will do later with this tool. And then uh, I still have a locking lug nut. I just got to check on the size. So my 21 millimeters is a little sloppy. Let me double check because these actually might be standard. Because again, some, some stuff on this car is standard for the bolt heads and nuts. Some of it's metric. So let me get into it. Okay, so between the 21 millimeter, which if you look at the chart is 826 thousandths, basically 27, and then the 13 sixteenths, which comes out to 812 and a half thousandths, that is a little bit smaller than 21 millimeter, and it is a not so sloppy of a fit because you want it to be a, you don't want it to be like you have to hammer it on, but you just want a little bit of play. So I'm gonna go with the 13 sixteenths. And I got my half-inch Milwaukee. It's like the mid-torque one. They have a high-torque one now. They've had had it out for a couple years, maybe five years or longer, which I may invest in. But for now, this one works well to get the stuff like the lug nuts off. So, just trying to do it with one hand. Get the ratchet, half-inch ratchet started. There we go. All right, just like that, it pops right out. And I already got the... Uh, key started on the uh, locking lug nut. Comes right out, no problem. Alright, let's we'll take them all out on video, why not? I'll actually put the phone down for the last one, because uh, since the wheel is most likely not rusted on the hub, the wheel's going to want to fall forward. I don't want to mess it up. Some, sometimes the wheel will be real rusted up, especially on these older Mustangs. If you haven't taken the wheel off in a long time, it'll be seized up around the hub or around this part right here. So just keep that in mind when you go back. You may want to clean this surface up and the mating surface on the inside of the rim. Okay, so looking up in here, I believe I have this screw, that screw, and then there's some tabs, like there's one there. Plastic tabs, I can take it with that green handle tool you saw me use earlier. There's one here. Uh, let's come up, up high. Huh. thought there may have been a few more. I think it's one. I might take out the whole entire wheel liner. Or I, I think the washer fluid reservoir on the pump is just right behind the front area. Like in front of the hub and brake rotor assembly towards the front of the car. So these usually break. I really need to just buy a uh, pack of these brand new i think you can get them off amazon because if you these plastic tabs always or push pins break real easy since they're so brittle with age and this one's actually pretty flush but well, here we go starting to work it Get right in there behind it. There we go. Okay, I got it a little further, but there we go. And is it broken? It is. It's okay. They, they can put these plastic threads on, but they always just like deform when you take it out. So it's really like a one time use thing. Okay, so we got that. Next, um, let me take my. 
little quarter inch ratchet and hit these two screws here. Broke them loose off camera just to make sure they weren't rusted and gonna break the bolt heads off. Okay, so the other one you have to lay down the ground and peek up under here and you see it right in here. Let's see. Yeah. I'm just gonna go pry on the tool. Sometimes it's just stubborn. Okay, and actually it's, it may go back in this, it may be sitting there loose, putting it back in, but that's all I can do with that. It doesn't feel like there's any more in the front here, down low. I think we just got, oh, you know what? There's another uh, Phillips head screw here. So let's go ahead and take that out. So again, I just got my little quarter inch ratchet with the Phillips head bit. surprise screws there doesn't appear to be this one here is not part of the inner fender liner so if that's it you can kind of start to pry it out the uh, fender like folds back in with a lip all the way back, so you're gonna have to get it out of that lip. <clears throat> so, just do your best, be careful, take it slow, working at it, and because you don't wanna break anything. So, yeah, let me work on this for a little while, see what's up. With it partially out, what I was able to do to, to get this section out is actually take the the trim removal tool and kind of stick it in with with this side up up under this lip and just lightly pry so it kind of pulls the fender liner out away from the fender you can start to work it out but i think i'm just going to take the whole thing off just trying to hold it back and work in there is going to be difficult the other thing i did is um this uh i think abs line it uh it has takes like a U, and the U part sits in um, these two brackets here. So I just carefully um, pulled the little grommets out of the brackets and got up to the sides so of the fender when I be putting pressure on them. And as you can see, if I pull the fender liner back, I can sneak the phone in here. And there's the pump. It's like a submersible pump because it sits at the bottom of the reservoir. The washer fluid so i can see it but it's just kind of hard to hold the fender liner back so just get the whole thing out but um i believe that is the issue the pump's not working and then i'll, I'll key it on and, and test it with the button again but i did not hear the pump you know trying to do anything when i was testing it the other day so to take out the rest of the fender liner you got a push pin here you got another phillips here and then nothing up high so let me double check with you guys and it might be something on down low Ugh. we take a look yeah you got these two smaller push pins it looks like for when the fender liner curves down toward the bottom and then yeah one push pin right here right below the one up above so just take all that out and then you should be good to remove the whole fender liner 
Okay, so we got it out with the rest of those screws. And it's always a good time to clean out any leaf and debris that gets caught up in there. So we'll do that as well. So peek it inside. We got some uh, wiring that runs just inside the fender liner, which is always important to have your fender liners on because you want to protect this wiring from any rock chips or anything kicking up off the road while you're driving. And yeah, we will, uh, I don't know what that is right there, but um, go ahead and uh, get a closer look up here. I wonder, now it's possible the, the pump is clogged up, but it's going to be a good idea to order a new one just in, just in case, you know, instead of just cleaning up. If, if it does work, then I still might think about ordering a new one, but um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get in there and check it out. So I think there's, just got to figure out how to get that connector off. And then um, pull the pump out. And since my reservoir, I know my reservoir is full of washer fluid. Got this bucket here, I might see if I can catch any of it because uh, I definitely have filled it up and tried to uh, get it to go. So looking at it, there might be a little tab in, in the middle there. We got to push down and pull the connector out. Okay, so for this connector, you just got to lift this tab up just a little bit and get it over the uh, plastic piece right here where it connects to. And then this looks pretty darn corroded in there, so I'm going to see how difficult that is to get out of there. I wonder, hmm, let's see, you got the line coming out here. And then you got a bolt here. I wonder if I need to pull the whole thing just to get a get it on the bench and get a better eye on it. I don't think there's anything else that I need to disconnect on it. Let's peek around the front. I don't really see anything there. So I think I might have to try that to get a better eye on it. If it's so corroded, I'm not gonna be able to get it out by hand. So I decided to pull off the uh, the connection here, off the bottom, and just drain it. Got a little container catching it, and then then I'll take off this bolt, which appears to be a eight millimeter. And I can pull the, the whole thing out, and then get on the bench. Maybe the the corroded area where the pump is might have to spray that down and, and try to work it out where it's sitting in. Okay, so the other thing to note is that it has a little tab built in to the wash the reservoir and that tab sits in that hole right in there. After you take out the uh, 8 millimeter bolt head right there. Notice let the rest drain out. Okay, so if you look on both sides, you got these two tabs on one side two tabs on the other. Initially, I thought I could actually pop the top off and there might be a gasket below the um, the lid, perhaps. But actually, if you look on the sides, it's, um, it's, it's, you would have to cut all the way around through like this glue or some sort of a, uh, epoxy or something. So I'm not going to mess with that now. So I'll just focus my attention right here on the pump. So it's got this almost like very thin like metal nut holding the whole thing in so i guess all the teeth going around i, I guess i'll try to pry those out see if we get that nut out first and maybe the pump will just pull out after that and it's pretty rusty so what i'll do first is i'll just uh where the teeth make contact i'll just spray a little of this power lube basically wd-40 or pb blaster and then try to carefully work that nut out if I order a new one, I would hope I would get a new nut going to go along with the new pump, but uh, we'll see about that. So let that soak, and then uh, I'm going to go in with a little pick, right angle pick, and see if I can carefully pry that out. Okay, so I was able to get the, uh, the nut out by prying in three sections, because if you look at the pump housing, there's three little kind of cutouts where I can fit my right angle pick in there and pry out. And... I looked up uh, online from LMR, you do get a new washer, seal washer, with the um, new pump. So I'm just going to do that because this one's a little deformed. I could try to hammer it out flat again. Now, the other thing is this pump is kind of 
kind of rusted in there and it's just a tight fit which is good because i think there might be a some kind of rubber seal or o-ring that keeps it from leaking out out this side so i was able to get these needle nose down there and as you can see if i can get it with one hand i can get a little rotation so i'm starting to work it loose so just be careful and i'm not sure if you if it's one of those where you have to like rotate it like a quarter of a turn so i can release from some tabs and you can pull it straight out or what is i i would not imagine it threaded maybe it's just a tight fit is all and you just got to work it back and forth so i'm going to keep at it and i'll tell you how i got it out afterwards okay so i was able to get it out i put down the needle nose picked up the right angle pick again and then it's you don't you can kind of twist it back and forth just to kind of free up the fit where the body sits down you can see it's real rusty here um, but it's not, you don't twist it any more than a couple degrees because there's a little tab right here on the uh, outside of the flange. And if you look down in the fit, there's a little groove um, right here. So that tab is not going to allow it to rotate more than a couple degrees either way, but still try to rotate just to free it up out of the fit. And then what I did is I simply took the uh, pick and I was able to work it down just under each opening tab and get my right angle so it sat like that and just pull up on it and do that keep doing that on all three positions and it'll slowly start to work itself out if it's not too seized in there don't don't grab it by this fit here because you probably just end up damaging it cracking it messing it up and you may not be able to actually pull it out unless you know you have a new pump coming and you can if that works for you do that just grab take a needle nose i guess you could just grab it there but i was able to do it with a pick under each of these tabs these openings and just it would going around each time a little by little it started to work itself out and spraying the power loop down there it's gonna it's gonna work itself down you know where the actual body of the motor is and that'll help it slide out easier but you can see the scale and rust that got built up which was keeping it from you know moving it all get got real seized up in there so i'll go ahead and plug it back in the connector key the car and try the button but i suspect this motor is shot probably the the seal went bad and water got in the motor and it's just shot but we'll give it a shot why not and then uh i'll clean out this fit order the new pump from lmr and then just uh wait on it to get delivered with the car keyed on we'll go ahead hit the knob and see if we hear anything coming out of the motor here i'll try to get a good video And the, the wipers are going. I don't hear anything coming out of that motor. Yeah, it should still be uh, spraying, but it ain't. So let me uh, just, just to make sure, one final check. I don't think it's even gonna rotate at all. So I just wanna see that on camera. Let me try one more time. Okay, here we go. Yeah, see, it ain't even spinning. Sometimes you give a little knock, but I suspect water got through the seal. Seal went bad. Motor shot. Yep. All right, so we confirmed it. Motor shot, so order a new one, and we'll be back in business. Okay, this is the new windshield washer pump. Uh, it's from ACI brand. Looked it up. Here's your part number, 173964. And it even came with a new um, washer with the tabs on the uh, outside diameter. And this is the old one. And if you just put them side by side. Okay, so if you put them side by side, you can see the impellers are slightly different, but it should, it should fit fine. It's more about this fit and the, I guess, the O-ring fitting down in the fit in the uh, washer tube here in the reservoir so we'll test fit that i think what i'll do is i'll go ahead and plug it in the connector on the car and then just see if it uh just to ensure that it powers on uh i i don't think i have to be worried about running it dry i'm only going to run it for a couple seconds and then i uh, made in taiwan i guess in 2016 wow uh-oh see uh what happens with that but i guess one side is the positive one's the negative so we will check that out. The factory one was not marked positive or negative, but you can match them up. So they're same length and everything. And 
yeah the connector looks the same but you got the three cut out so let's try it on the car and see if it works okay so the car keyed on we will test it out oh there we go it works you saw it on camera it dropped down but we're good to go so we'll go ahead and install that back in the reservoir and then we'll put the reservoir back in the car fill it up rather than just installing this uh i guess rubber seal piece dry i'll just use some uh vaseline that's all i got laying around i wish i had that green tube of dielectric grease or seal grease as we call it in the shop but that's back of the shop but i ain't too worried about it. i think just a little bit of this just to help get it to uh slide into the fit and seal up properly so put a little bit of this uh vaseline petroleum jelly around the uh rubber seal here and then the old one had a tab like i showed you early in the video the new one does not so i went ahead and i lined up the uh the shape where the connector will plug into and i just put a little sharpie mark right there to denote that's where it's going to sit where that uh tab slides because there's a cutout in the uh in the top of the fit right right there so i'll just line that sharpie mark up in there and i'll rotate it around so it can slide down about where that groove is so i'll just start pushing it down carefully and straight and even making sure my sharpie mark is going to line up with the cutout and it slides in pretty nice i wiped out the fit and uh okay just felt it bottom out and then the last thing to do is uh i got the new uh washer with the tabs and then uh, there's just a bunch of marks where all the old tabs uh were fed down where they sit so i'll just try to line them up i don't think it, it doesn't seem to go it, it can go either which way it doesn't have a particular direction it doesn't matter where you flip it so i'll just get started and try to get it down in there uh, without bending it and uh hmm. i think i'm gonna want to get it started pretty evenly so let me take it off camera and see what i can do here let me just make sure it's not i guess bigger than the old ring and no they're they're about the same size so i mean who knows maybe we'll put a little Vaseline on all the tabs. I mean, I don't know. Just uh, whatever helps, right? Give you that little extra ease of uh, install. Can't really hurt it, so it's uh, it's worth a shot. Kind of got to get it started evenly at first. If you get it cockeyed at an angle, it's gonna it's not gonna want to go. Okay, now it's starting to go. I mean, it's got a little bend and flex to it, so just work it down in there until you get it flush with the top of the uh, pump housing. <clears throat> maybe I'll get my pick, or maybe a flathead. And I'll, I'll take this uh, rounded part of the 90 degree pick where it's a little thicker and just push push with this part just down in a few different spots just pushing on each tab going around trying to get to sit down evenly in there okay it's i mean it's not perfect but it, it it is down there it's sitting on the face all the way around so just do your best and try not to bend the uh that steel washer that they give you and yeah they're good to go now we can go ahead and um reinstall it in the car okay so now we'll just get the uh the tab back into that hole the more oval hole and then put our eight millimeter bolt head in okay so i guess we'll angle it like this get it up in the fender area get the uh, bracket with the hole behind our wire here get it in there It'll be hard to see, but uh, I'm gonna 
get that tab there in the front started. Still kind of have to, I guess you kind of have to do it by feel, it'll be hard to see on camera. So let me plug our sensor back in. Remember, it only goes one way based on the shape of it. Okay. Got the one tab in and let the, hear the other one click here. Okay, I heard it. Very good. And just to show you there. All right. Looking pretty good. And then our our line that where the fluid pumps through, we can go ahead and reattach that. And yeah, it looks pretty clean. Just gotta get it here on the uh, output. I think it, does it sit up in there? Yeah, it's gonna sit up in there a little bit. So make sure it goes above this section in inside there. Maybe hold the top of the reservoir as you push that in there. Now before I put my fender liner and wheel back on and reconnect those grommets for the, I guess, ABS line in the bracket, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the reservoir up, check for leaks, and then ensure that my I plugged the connector in all the way and that it pumps fluid out the nozzles. So let's do that. All right, I'll do this from inside the car so I don't spray myself in the eyes. Key on. And uh, let's see if it's a fix well done. Thank you. I'll take it. I like it a lot. All right. So we have windshield washer fluid pump action once again. Love it when a fix works. Got 134,098 miles. I got an oil change coming up at 135,000. So, but I'm going to a wedding. So I'm going to want to change the oil before that to give this car the best shot it's got on a mini road trip. So I got some driving to do coming up here in just a little, just shortly here. Got to give the Challenger back to CarMax though. That, uh, powerful scat pack will go back but we'll be back in a v8 no problem all right thanks for watching